All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Board of Trustees uh, public uh, session agenda, uh, dated April 21st, 2020. Um, in order to begin our meeting, we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, United States, States of, America of America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, which stands one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. Thank you very much. Uh, that said, uh, we now can move into the public comment uh, portion of our agenda. Uh, Russell, are there any uh, public comment that has been submitted? There was no public comment submitted prior to 5.45 this evening. Okay, excellent. So we can now move to uh, board presentations to which uh, we do not have any this evening. And then the, uh, we now have discussion items. And the uh, first discussion item is the uh, Lung Cancer Research Association Strides for Life August 9th, 2020, uh, Russell or Julie. Uh, this is obviously in your court, so whoever would like to take it, feel free. Go ahead, Julie. Okay, um, so this is an annual event. Um, this is about the sixth or seventh year. Um, it takes place again on Sunday, August 9th. It is the same route that they did last year uh, that goes around Lake Agawam. They're just asking for everything the same as, as we have done it for them in the past. Um, Chief, I don't know that you've had any concerns or issues in the past with this. Event. I think it's all no. very smoothly. So they're just asking for the support. I did let them know that again, um, that this would be presented to the board this evening, but that of course, due to the COVID-19 situation, you know, we weren't a hundred percent sure how things would look at that time. So it, if you, I don't know if you wanna do a conditional approval or something of that nature, but I did let them know that that was a possibility. Uh, Chief and, and, uh, and Brian, I'll, I'll let you guys take it from here. You know, we're of course open, in, open to anything. This is a great event. Um, not sure how we want to uh, proceed with uh, future events at this point. If, if all the public safety requirements are met, I think why don't we approve it unconditionally um, and hope and be hopeful that it will be held at that time if the date is available. And just with the with the very strong asterisks that if we have to move it because there are circumstances that are occurring, uh, they'll just the, the organizers are just gonna have to be aware of that. As long as the chief is okay with that. Yeah, that's fine. Hey um, uh, Brian. Yes. Is there any stipulation of when we have to let them know when we may or may not want to change uh, yeah. the time? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, it's a very fluid situation. We don't really know. Okay. There, isn't a, there isn't an advance notice. and We try to give as much notice as we can. Hopefully, again, we're going to approach this with the attitude that the summertime will be back to normal and uh, life will resume as, as, as it was. We also, I, we also might, when we respond to them, uh, many of these fundraisers are putting in place virtual walks or virtual um, events. So we might say to them, listen, keep that date in mind, but have your participants realize that we may do the event for the purposes of fundraising. And if we have to do it you know, virtually or, you know, we could do it, vir you know, they could do it virtually. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I believe we have resolutions uh, later on uh, in tonight's meeting so we can get to it then. Uh, the next discussion item, and Russell, thanks for organizing that. It's a new kind of a slightly new way of doing things. Uh, it seems to be working pretty well. Uh, so the next discussion item is the 2019 audited financial statements. Uh, Russell, I'll let you take this one. Okay. So uh, Sadie, Sadie Levine finished our, uh, our audit. Uh, they had very few comments, uh, some, you know, just some very minor uh, recommendations and suggestions, which is in the management letter. Uh, the, the financial status of the village of Southampton is extremely strong. Um, we, we, over our revenue projections by close to $400,000, we were uh, about $700,000 low, uh, under on, uh, expenses. Um, our unassigned fund balance is now at $7,331,191. Uh, we have not assigned any fund balance, uh, year to date, fiscal year to date. So that balance still remains the same. Um, and when we get to the next topic, which is the 2020-2021 budget, 
uh, the village uh, has is proposing a budget which is a balanced budget under the tax cap without assigning any fund balance. So uh, if anyone has any, you know, any questions regarding the audit, uh, feel free to ask. It's a pretty detailed um, uh, document. And uh, later on, it's our obligation to um, accept the audit. Uh, we have a number of financial institutions, including our rating agencies that are waiting for a copy of this. So um, we, if we, you know, we accept it tonight. Again, at any time, if you have any questions or anything that uh, you want to bring forward, either through me to Sadie Levine, or you want to call the Bill Coates, the managing partner who handles our uh, account, uh, certainly the board is, uh, is welcome to, uh, to query uh, any of us on that. Thank you, Russell. Does the board have any questions on this? I'm good. Okay, excellent. So, you, Mayor, can I just add one comment? Please. Thank you, Brian. I just want to add one uh, comment, and really it's a congratulations to um, Village Administrator Craddaville on the March 31st, 2020 uh, management letter on the no significant difficulties, only very minor immaterial changes, and no disagreements with regard to, with management with regard to the course of the audit. I just wanted to pass that along for, to the Mayor, the Board, and uh, Administrator Craddaville, so congratulations. Thank you, Brian. And uh, thank you, Russell. Uh, we appreciate that. That's excellent. And, and, and if I could, and, it, and, I, and Pat Letterman puts an awful lot of time in to, to make certain that when those auditors come in, everything is prepared and ready. They do not have to wait and sit around and, uh, you know, oh, when can you get this to me? She has them ready uh, and in order. And, you know, she deserves a a lion's share of the credit on, on you know, the day-to-day -day running of the, of the uh, financial operation of the village. Yay, Pat. Well said. That's right. All right. Thank you, uh, Pat, as well. If you're, uh, if you're watching, thank you uh, for your hard work and diligence. Uh, the third discussion item, as we're moving along here this evening, is the 2020-2021 village budget. Uh, Russell, again, I'll let you uh, take this, and if any of the any of our trustees would like to weigh in, uh, we can feel free. Okay, again, uh, a lot of hard work was put on put in from the uh, I'll say from the ground up in preparing this budget. Uh, in I'll, I'll say any time in my career, I think that this was the most involved that uh, department supervisors in working with either their the mayor or their uh, trustee uh, working and discussing what should go in and what shouldn't go in. Um, I will also say it's the first time I've worked with a budget in which I was able to put in um, and, and pass on to the mayor every request in the operating budget that the supervisors put in without having to give anything a haircut to come in under the tax cap. So everyone put an effort in and put a reasonable budget in of realistic expenses and realistic expectations, um, which essentially I was able to turn over to the mayor uh, with, um, with little or no uh, changes to what was requested. Um, we still, uh, as I said, came in under the uh, tax cap as we did last year. Uh, we're about $42,500 under what uh, would have been permitted. That's also good news because that also is something that we are able to carry over into next year. If, um, you know, as we spoke about at the budget hearing a couple of weeks ago, this budget not only is a solid budget for uh, 2020, 2021, with conservative revenue estimates and reasonable uh, expenditure requests, um, it does bode ourselves very, very well for a couple of things. If things do not turn around, if there is a long uh, dip in the economy, um, there is room in this budget to uh, protect ourselves that we would most likely not need to go into our fund balance to cover expend uh, necessary and essential expenditures. Um, and again, it sets us up very, very well for next year if in fact um, we really have to um, 
make some dramatic changes in how we operate as a village. So it affords us the ability to um, look and see how we're doing and, and continue in the practices that we're looking to do. Um, there's plenty of room in here for capital projects and other types of, uh, of activities that the and functions that the village is looking to do, that the Board of Trustees are looking to do. Um, and again, a balanced budget without uh, you know, taking from the rainy day fund and an anticipation in the event that it is a rainy day that we have room in this budget to adjust to, uh, to any un unfortunate uh, you know, circumstances due to prolonged uh, results of this pandemic. Thank you very much, Russell. Um, we appreciate your hard work on this budget. Um, there was a lot of hard work by Pat Let, uh, Letterman, uh, as well as Kathy Sweeney, who uh, you know, inputted some of the numbers. Uh, so we really uh, worked uh, pretty hard over the month of March uh, to get the budget where it, uh, we wanted it to be. Um, now, with that said, are there any uh, comments from the board? Board comments, anyone? My view is that the budget is very good and it provides a lot of meaningful changes and investments for our future. All right, just so we know, we'll get to this during the resolution section. Um, I thought we did an excellent job, you know, on the budget. Uh, we covered a variety of territory. We put out a press release, you know, stating what we wanted to use uh, money for, uh, where we wanted to appropriate it. Uh, we highlighted on uh, transparency. Uh, we used guidelines from the New York State Controller's Office uh, there is a resolution uh, later uh, tonight uh, that makes amendments to the budget that we proposed. Uh, I uh, didn't make that resolution, uh, so everyone you know, who's watching tonight knows. Um, we'll, of course, get to that, um, but uh, just so everyone is clear, uh, the resolution that is forthcoming uh, as the budget officer and you know, mayor, of course, I didn't do that. Uh, that was obviously uh, put in by other board members, and I'm sure those board members will have a chance to explain uh, why they they would do that. Um, and so we'll give them a chance, um, I guess, when we get to the resolution section to explain. So uh, with that said, uh, we can now move to communications to the board. The first communication is from NICOM, federal aid to local municipalities. Thanks. Um, all right. So, uh, we have a letter from uh, the president of NICOM, Peter Baines, who uh, is asking uh, uh, board members, the village board to uh, write to their, send a letter to their uh, federal representatives uh, stating that they believe that the federal aid that is being proposed uh, is too heavy to the larger cities. And they believe that smaller municipalities uh, villages and the local level need to have their fair share. And uh, if, the, if the board pleases, uh, we could get a letter drafted and send it to, uh, uh, again, to our uh, Congress, Congress persons and our senators, uh, federal senators, uh, to, um, you know, to please listen that we believe that there should be a fairer distribution. Thank you, Russell. I think we absolutely should do that. Uh, I think uh, on some of our calls, not only with the uh, Suffolk County Executive Steve Ballone, but on our ESSM calls, uh, that's a big, big topic. Uh, local villages and towns uh, similar to ours, you know, should be getting our fair share. And, uh, you know, we should obviously do our part in letting uh, both the state and federal government know uh, that we, you know, we, you know, local governments, you know, are the key to, you know, good government. So uh, I guess uh, that, that covers that. I don't know if anyone has any other thoughts on that letter no, sounds good okay, okay so uh, we'll we, we'll draft the letter um on behalf of the board and we'll have the mayor sign that i i, I don't believe we don't need a resolution to do that i, I just think that's the discussion that can just turn into a letter hey russ can i ask one thing please i'm sorry sure. yeah you know um um uh, county executive steve balone brought up in the calls that part of the criteria for uh municipalities i forget whether it's whatever it's called, a village or town or whatever, is uh, for some of this aid is, is cut off at 2 million population and, and Suffolk County falls in at 1.5 and he's looked at some revisions. Is this what you're talking about? Is this falling the same lines as that? 
Uh, it's it's what he's talking about is a little bit of different, a, a, a slightly different pot of money that goes to to counties. Um, this is this is monies that are supposed to go to uh, city, you know, uh, municipalities, cities, villages, towns. Um, but but it's in the same bill. So so essentially, you know, same church, maybe a different pew. That's all. Okay. So the criteria for this, for the Scavoa one you're talking about, I mean, uh, the NICOM, that is not based on population size. No, it is. It oh, is. Okay. But again, it's a different, it's just, it, I, I am fairly certain it's a slightly, it's a different pot of money. Okay. But it is, it is pegged to population size. Yes, it the is. The money that came out before was driven by a population of, uh, to Rich's point, a half a million and above. And if you're not a town or a village of that amount, you weren't looked at is my understanding, right, Rich? Well, I was referring to, I, I don't know the, the, the Denicom village or town version, but the county or whatever that Steve Ballone, I wasn't sure what it was, but he, uh, uh, is, it was a 2 million earmark, 2 million um, uh, capita earmark. Mm -hmm. and, um, and Suffolk County has 1.5, which would, uh, make the county ineligible for certain aid. So I guess there was some type of appeal going on there. And this is, again, this is a similar scenario, Russell, but just, again, as you say, a different pot of money. Yeah. Okay. All right, Russell, with that said, there's five communications to the board. Uh, we can just let you run with all of them, if you don't mind. Uh, that would be helpful, and we okay. can move through them. We've got a hefty second half. Okay, so uh, real quick. Uh, Suffolk County Village uh, Officials Association has a letter that uh, they have concerns with the fact that um, they, they're they not happy with the, uh, uh, um, I apologize for, I got the two of them mixed up, um, the, the natural uh, gas capacity issue. And they, they feel as though um, we need to we need to act and demand that we get uh, the same type of efficiencies and electrification that will be vital uh, moving forward. Um, and uh, they're looking for some uh, for some aid to help us get a you know more natural gas. As as, as many village board may, members may know, um, we had to put in at the ambulance barn a uh, a natural gas. Uh, not sorry, a propane gas. Uh, tank for our generator backup because of the fact that you know that, that they have not, there's this problem with natural gas capacity so um, this is to let us know and again um, looking for us to support the NESE pipeline which is a more cost efficient and that adequately supplies the capacity that we need so that's just a, a again no I don't think there's really any action unless we want to send again to the Public Service Commission uh, a letter in support of this. Um, again, I think I think it would, you know, I think we should support Sco, uh, uh, Scova. They, they're very supportive of us. I think that um, it does it can affect us. So again, uh, this would just be a letter from uh, again from the Village Board. Um, so the next communications, uh, and I'll just run through them, um, Mayor, if that's okay. Please. Please okay, do. is the uh, East End Financial, who is our uh, uh, financial advisors and uh, the folks that we uh, that invest our fire department LOSAP uh, funding, uh, they're not only giving us quarterly reports, they are actually reporting to us on a weekly basis as to um, where they see the markets, where things are going. Um, the good news is, is that um, Yes, we did have a little bit of a setback, a slight setback on uh, our our funding, but in comparison, I think our it was a, we had approximately a, a, a nine or a ten percent drop in comparison to a much higher uh, rate. So we're going to continue with the same practice we had, and we feel very confident that we're still um, on track to uh, get ourselves fully funded. Uh, in a low sap program and and again uh, we get com uh, communication from them on a day on a on a weekly basis um, the next uh, communications is from the Suffolk County Community Development Office uh, re regarding some additional CDBG funding uh, with regards to COVID-19 uh, filled out a questionnaire uh, tonight actually before I uh, uh, left the office um, there is looks like the federal government is going to make a pot of money available 
uh, it would be the same process that we went through uh, in 2019 for uh, the programs that uh, we supported, which was the Heart of the Hamptons and the Southampton Daycare. They are looking for other organizations that have either been affected by or are looking to do things that will help in the future if in fact something like this happens again. Um, there's more details to come. Uh, it's ju it was just informational that it was, uh, that the federal government's looking to do so and we needed to fill out a questionnaire as to the types of things we'd be looking to do. Uh, included in that, of course, was you know business revitalization and and items that uh, that we have been talking about, as well as uh, some uh, handicap accessible um, and low income uh, help as well. Uh, a lot more to come on that, but that's also some good news that there may be another pot of money available to uh, help offset some of the effects of COVID nineteen. The next communications is from the New York State oh, Workers. Well, I just had a question, oh, Matt. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Oh, no, no, no problem. Thank you. Is that the is separate and apart from what Nicole Christian, our grant writer, has brought to our attention? I don't I'm not, recognize this name. I'm not specific to exactly what um, uh, Nicole. Uh, you know, I, I I did not. You know, see what she was speaking. It could be one and the same. However, do the list afterwards. Yeah. I, I, I However, what I will say is this is a pretty straightforward process and it's not it's not really grant it's not writing for grants what it is is essentially saying we have a need and then basically um, you know putting together what our needs are and then you know finding out how much there you know they have available per village we're part when the CDBG is a consortium of of uh, of many municipalities which frees you up from having to write the grants to HUD for this particular pot of money. We get it allocated, we get a proportionate share through Suffolk County um, by being part of this consortium. Thank okay, you. So, okay, Thanks. so next we have communications with New York State Workers' Compensation Alliance, which is our, uh, uh, our workers' comp carrier. Uh, it's a letter that was forwarded to um, all of our supervisors regarding, you know, again, repeating safety during this time. And they also are sending us a donation of 50 masks to be distributed. Um, and I have one addition that is not on your list, but was received by everyone on the board, but I want to put into the record. Rob Coburn, on behalf of the Clean Water Committee, submitted the Old Town and Wickapog Pond 2020 management plan for the board to review and look at. So um, I did want to make sure I read that into the record, uh, even though that it, it was sent to all board members. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. We now have uh, suggested uh, resolutions. Mayor, if I, if I could, we did, we did, and I, I didn't know if it was done purposely, we did miss and uh, the public hearings. We have two public hearings tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. I, it's uh, not used to uh, looking at the, uh, uh, the, uh, the agenda in a different way. Yes, please, uh, let's, uh, let's move forward with the public hearings. Okay, so uh, we'll entertain a motion to uh, open a public hearing on proposed local law amending chapter 81 N surfboarding. Uh, again, comments uh, were accepted up until 545 on the date of this hearing. Um, there were no comments. Is there a, a, a motion to open the hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, do you brief. want to start, Alexandra? Yeah. Thank you. So the, this, this uh, local law is the proposal to lift the prohibition on recreational surfing um, at the village beaches. Um, and so essentially the law permits surfing uh, for rec recreational purposes uh, between Janu June 15th and September 15th. Uh, between uh, um, at, 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 any, at any of the beaches except for Cooper's. Um, and this was 
um, a proposal from the surf committee. The second part of that local law allows the board to designate other beaches, village beaches, um, as prohibited places. So if in your discretion you decide that Little Plains is not appropriate, you can pass a resolution designating it as such. And if, again, if we can, uh, just a, a little history, uh, essentially what we're doing is taking a law that uh, uh, surfing was, is permitted uh, currently under the current law, uh, which was amended by a resolution, however, um, people could surf anywhere from September 15th through the winter until June 15th. And then from June 15th until September 15th, it was prohibited at any of the village beaches um, between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. What essentially this local law is doing is, rever is, is reversing that and basically saying that surfing is, a, is permitted with the exception of Cooper's Beach during that period of time. And as, uh, as council said, you know, if for some reason there is a need to uh, prohibit, uh, you know, the village by resolution can prohibit. So um, again, uh, a lot of discussion with the surf committee on this and, you know, a very strong consensus uh, on, on an issue that was, uh, was, became a little sticky last summer. I saw in one of the versions something about Gary McWay being listed. Is that still in here somewhere? That is, that's for the surf school. So, so it was that it's prohibited everything east of Gary Mack. Did I read that correctly? Everything west. So up west. to the county. That, okay. County. All right. So that was my bad. That's, that, that's the next local law. That's number two. Oh, okay. Never mind. The only thing I would add is, um, you know, we're happy to get this back on the agenda. This was uh, a issue, if we can even remember, um, back uh, to last summer. A lot has changed uh, since then. Um, but that being said, um, you know, we're still committed um, to um, our surfing community. Uh, we're committed uh, to our residents who like to enjoy the beaches. We're committed to people who like to swim in the beaches. And ultimately, uh, we worked very hard um, to, uh, to get this uh, to work with the surf committee. We pushed through this. Um, and I also wanted to really thank the surf committee. Um, there, the surf committee uh, came together, uh, they worked together, they listened, um, and they built consensus uh, through these committees that uh, we set up. And uh, they have now delivered for us a plan of working as a team that we think uh, will likely be uh, very good for uh, the entire village, um, bring much needed organization um, and protocols uh, to uh, uh, surf, uh, surf schools. And we have our surfers now, uh, if we choose to pass this, uh, uh, amend this local law, uh, can go and, and now not have to worry that they are in violation of our law. So I'm very happy, we're very happy to get this public hearing going. And uh, we think it will work out very well for, uh, for our community. And we have a complete you know, buy-in uh, from our uh, from uh, many members of our surf committee, so I think we we took a situation that was bad, where there was some confusion over the surf schools, and we turned it into a positive. Uh, and now our our surf schools are regulating themselves, and our surfers are back on the beaches uh, with no worries um, as far as uh, what the rules are, as far uh, or not not with worries as to uh, what the restrictions are. It's all clear, laid out, and uh, and the surf committee will also be very helpful in the communication and the local outreach. Um, so Russell, I'll let you, you know, take, take again from here. We can go through the, uh, the motions. Right. So if there's, if there's no other comment from, uh, the village board, uh, I, you know, the recommendation would be, uh, as again, this, you know, there have been updates to the board throughout kind of the process from the committee. Uh, there would be a recommendation that we could close this hearing and there is a suggested resolution later on to adopt this amendment, uh, to chapter 80. So um, if there's no other comments, I'll entertain a motion to uh, close this public hearing. So moved. Is there a second? Second. 
All in favor. Well, Russell, real quick, uh, I just wanted to talk to Brian real quick and to make sure, Brian, you're, you're good with this um, and this process. I think that Alexander presented it very accurately, and I appreciated okay. working with the committee and Chris Banco from my office, but Alexander took the lead on this from the beginning, and I appreciate it. So I think this, this is, as you stated, Mayor, this is well-drafted and ready for approval. All right. And also, so have we, my question then also is, um, have we given enough time for the public and everything to give comments uh, where everything we feel, Alexander, you feel very, very comfortable that enough time has been in so that come that we accept this now, close this public hearing? Sorry, you broke out, but I think you're asking whether the public has had sufficient notice to, to submit comments. Indeed. Well, we've, we've followed the legal requirements for, for notice. I, I will also say that the, the breadth of the people, and I'll, I'll take a little discretion in saying personalities of this makeup of this committee, uh, certainly I think that there was a, a, a plenty of, of commentary and feedback. Uh, there was a lot of back and forth with discussion about taking into account uh, how we make sure that we understand that not everybody goes to the beach to surf, that there are families that are looking to, um, you know, to enjoy, to swim and, and have children that they, you know, want in the water. And they, so, uh, you know, the second public hearing is the one that, you know, again, there was even a lot more back and forth and a lot more, uh, you know, give and take. Uh, the first public hearing really is essentially stating that, uh, you know, surfing is permitted. Uh, it once again gives the village board the flexibility if there is an issue that does not seem to be working itself out that it uh, can just by village board resolution, uh, you know, change a particular area or, or, or prohibit a certain area. Um, but I do think that uh, there was a very wide uh, uh, representation in the village uh, on this committee. And I'm just yeah. going to throw yeah, a comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yes, uh, absolutely. Collaboration with the committee was fantastic. I was able to, you know, hear a lot of comments from some of the people that were involved in it, and there was a lot of uh, a really, really good, hard, you know, conversations at times. And it's a necessary step, as we found out from last year, and it's a good step. And as we go through this, we're going to learn more from it, and we'll probably be able to, you know, discover some things that are going to be even better moving forward. But the most important thing is to, when we are down at the beach and we are safe and we are smart and we are making sure that, you know, we're uh, covering all the bases. So good job to uh, everybody that was involved in this. Okay, so we have a motion. I get to say one thing too. I need just to chime in on that and, and Trustee Parrish hit that on the head and, and what you did, Russ, because uh, this is clearly one of the uh, oldest arguments around um, in the village of Southampton. So I will say uh, that the group that was put together in the committee um, that Mark did a lot of uh, participation with there um, worked out very well. And, and it, it was, a, it was uh, one hell of a cross section of people. I will give you that uh, more than I anticipated. And more importantly, um, you did have the participation and the acceptance of the enforcement community or law enforcement. And that's a big thing because again, uh, you can pass all laws you want. If you can't enforce them, they mean nothing. So the important part is a group of people from a wide breadth uh, cross section of, of, of people in the village uh, and community, not just the village, in the community uh, got together and it also that uh, legislative, we agree on it and enforcement. That's not easy to do. So um, kudos to all involved in that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor to close the hearing? Aye. 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 Okay, the second public hearing is the proposed local law amending chapter 80-1A surf schools um do i have a motion to open the public hearing so moved is there a second second all in favor aye, aye. alexandra I'll... sure so as russell said that this proposed local law is to uh permit and regulate surf schools um and the way that the proposed law accomplishes that is by way of a license that would be obtained through the village administrator's office. Um, it would be within the, in the discretion of the village administrator to suspend 
any license if if there was a complaint or an allegation about a viol potential violation and then within 30 days there would be a hearing in front of the board of trustees to determine whether the license uh, to conduct the surf school should be revoked uh, the suspension should be continued or whether it should be lifted. Uh, the proposed local law also provides for uh, the Board of Trustees to adopt uh, rules and regulations as they see fit uh, to regulate surf schools and how they operate. Uh, that from, you know, the time, every, anything from the time that the schools are being run to, you know, how many, how many members are in each school. Um, and you'll see later on, there is a proposed resolution addressing these, these types of issues for the board to consider. And again, this, this, uh, this local law was vetted uh, by various, by the surf committee, which contains, as Russell said, a you know, a lot of different members of the community. They worked very diligently in putting together the local law and also the regulations that uh, they're proposing in the resolution. And they were really great about reaching a consensus on these issues, which wasn't always easy to do. <laughs> if I can add a couple of things before the board asks questions or comments. Um, one of the things that that this local law does is it takes away the cumbersomeness that we ran into last summer of the fact that this board of trustees only meets twice a month and sometimes there's three and a half weeks almost four weeks between meetings so if you recall last summer even though the board wanted to have a surf school because of the cumbersome cumbersomeness of the process um it, it became difficult to do that um, certainly, you know, the village administrator uh, works for the village board. Uh, can't imagine that anyone who would sit in the chair would not uh, converse, you know, especially with the, you know, the, the board member that uh, is a liaison to the beaches and the full board if there's an issue, you know, before taking an action. But what it does do is it, it does allow there to be fluidity if there needs to be change or if there are issues throughout, you know, throughout the year, you know, clearly, um, you know, everyone would work with law enforcement and, and get a feel for what is working and what isn't working. Um, and again, the most important aspect of this uh, local law if it's passed is that it does give the board the opportunity to by resolution uh, put together the regulations and rules that would govern surf schools. Um, and again, we can talk a little bit about that now if you want, or we could wait until that, that resolution comes up, but they, they do kind of go hand in hand. So, you know, I could see where there's some crossover on the discussion here on, on not only this local law, but, but the proposed regulations. And again, there was, there was a lot of very, very, I'll call it fiery discussion, um, but respectful discussion, um, you know, uh, surf schools, I believe, um, you know, are, are putting in place mechanisms for them to comply and clearly understand that very quickly, if they're not complying with the rules that are set forth, um, could have their school uh, suspended and, you know, obviously uh, would, would create a hardship for them. So uh, again, I think it was uh, you know, hard work by a lot of, a lot of good minds that came together uh, and interestingly enough, um, you know, the board, the, the committee ran itself. I mean, the, the chair of the committee, you know, he, he, he took the meeting over, ran it, uh, entertained motions, the whole thing. It was, uh, it was, uh, again, a very, very, uh, um, uh, vibrant group of people who went over this, uh, uh vibrant's a good word. <laughs> again, if, if I can. Um, and, and I know that the committee did a lot of work. I know that there were a lot of people talked about and all of that. I just want to make sure that the public who may not have been in those committee meetings or spoken to committee members or all of that, that they have the chance um, to make sure that their voices can be heard. 
So that is, that is again, my only concern like the previous is that, you know, there are some people who, who unfortunately, as we know, tonight might be the only time that they hear that this is on the thing, you know, on for discussion. And so I just want to make sure that they can be heard. Trustee Pilaro, you know, you're, you're welcome. If you'd like to give us some guidance um, as to how you'd like us to proceed, we're, we're happy to, you know, you know, whatever you think is best. I'm just curious if, I mean, if we opened this meeting tonight, how best does the public know that they can comment on it? Um, if, we, if we then close the meeting tonight and vote on the resolution, can they comment on it? So that's, that's, my only, that's my only question is to make sure that we are allowing the public the opportunity to comment on, on this public hearing, which it is a public hearing. And, 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 and you know, right now with, with the way that we are forced to do things, um, the public has to hear about it post our meeting and the meeting has, you know, 10 of us on it right now. That's all my, that's my only, that's my only inclination when I hear that, you know, we are opening the meeting tonight, then closing the meeting and then trying to vote on it later, later. So let me ask a couple questions then because Andrew, I'm gonna uh, give you some thoughts from me. Um, this started probably back in August when we first, you know, when it all came down and we went August, we went September, October, it popped up again around December, I believe is when we started to talk about it again. And we did have quite a few, Russell, maybe you can tell, we did have at least three public hearings, correct, regarding, you know, people's thoughts about where we would go. However, once uh, the mayor and the board of trustees decided to form this committee, we sort of gave it to them, figuring that they would do all the things that, you know, they would do to protect the, 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 the you know, privilege to go down and surf and, and the right in a lot of ways also. Um, there was a lot of discussion. I don't know, Brian, maybe, or Alexander, you can answer this. Was it always the board's intent to give it to the committee and let them come in, come up with it, and therefore their discussions were part of the public already? And if there, if there was any feedback, it could have went to that. And therefore, when we got it delivered, we then had the right or the opportunity to vote on it. I think the Sorry about that. I, yeah, I think that the intention was not not to cede your ability as a board of trustees to a committee, but to allow them to have their thoughts and have it hashed out and promulgated in a way that allows you to have certain feedback from uh, hyper interested parties. That that, that that I think that was the appointment of the committee. So I, I think that that committee uh, worked hard on getting it together. And I think that that's uh, indicative of the lack of uh, public notice or public participation, I should say, in this to a certain extent, um, and no emailed comments to um, the village administrator. But uh, to Trustee Pilaro's point, you know, it is, we're in a strange time here in a public hearing and, and, and having kind of uh, not of us in the same room and no members of the public here. So. What we can certainly do is if we feel we want to hold the public hearing open, uh, either publish it again, hold it open, solicit comments, vote on it at the next public meeting, or we can adopt it tonight. And um, if we get some flood of feedback, reopen the hearing, have it again, and amend the law. Well, two things. One, uh, like well, actually, actually, I have three things. One, uh, we're in a little bit of a time constraint because people are trying to sign their, you know, their family members or sign up for, uh, you know, for lessons. So we're a little tight on that. Number two, what this public hearing is basically saying is that we're going to allow surf schools and that this village board is going to uh, promulgate rules and regulations around the surf schools. So, um, Adopting this local law tonight, all that's doing that is different than last year is that instead of us um, advertising for a, a school, awarding it to a school, and then um, not having really any particular rules, which we didn't, you know, all the only obligations we had was uh, the fact of telling them the time in which they could 
have the school. There was no, there was nothing that, you know, decided what distinguished one school from another. Uh, law enforcement had a very difficult, could have a very difficult time in the past telling who was a licensed uh, uh, surf school, who wasn't. Um, so all of those things are defined. Uh, the, the third part that I think is important is that we noticed this public hearing in the same way that we notice any public hearing. And our residents are, are, are very keen. If we, ha if, if we have a public hearing on uh, leaf blowers, or we're having a public hearing on the cell towers, uh, as we did last year, or on registration, um, we put notice in the paper the same way. And our village is a very, uh, very few secrets in our village. Yeah. And, you know, comments that were received on and recommendations that came to this committee came, you know, came from many different places. Um, and I think that the fact that we do get a lot of feedback after advertising for a public hearing, uh, you know, it, it's the normal protocol. Uh, you know, we didn't receive phone calls. We didn't receive, and normally we would. So, you know, I, you know, I, I, we really didn't do anything different here other than the fact that there aren't people sitting in our audience, um, you know, listening. Uh, and I do think we have two things, flexibility to change the, the rules governing it at any time, and B, we're in a time constraint if we're looking to get surf schools going, uh, you know, in a, in a timely manner so that they can advertise and sign people up. Right. If, if I may, um, Russell, good point. I mean, I'm inclined to go ahead with it because, again, there's been much discussion about this and, and Trustee Palau brings up a, a good point about, you know, an opportunity. But uh, uh, our counselor just pointed out that based on these conditions and current times, that can be done after the fact. Um, I'm just going to point out a couple things, if I may. Um, looking through this, this is pretty detailed as far as hours and, 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 and length of time and amount of participants and, and uh, students and so forth. So, um, and again, this didn't come lightly and I, and I applaud the committee for doing this. And I do think the committee certainly responded to the concerns of the public and their own, their own internal surfing community. Um, so that said, I have no problem moving ahead because it, it, there is time constraints. What I will ask is, uh, Chief, if I may, uh, either yourself or certainly uh, you had some lieutenants or part of your, your, your um, uh, staff, um, executive staff, attend these meetings. Um, have you reviewed any of this? I don't want to put you on the spot. Or do you have any issues? Is, is this something that you're okay with um, proceeding with? Yeah, I and Lieutenant Wetter, I think we made it to just about all the meetings. If not both of us, at least one of us. And you know, we, we don't have any objections. Okay. Because again, I think there's there there are there are a lot of things outlined here, and um, and again, they're only as good as the enforcement of it. And if you think this is something we can at least start proceeding with, uh, that's a major component for me. Um, so Wait, that's just for what it's worth. I I can just also add that the the surf committee is really interested in in self policing themselves also. And while we explained to them that we needed a you know mechanism to enforce it enforce the law but with our own police force um, to the extent that they want to make sure that the surf schools are staying within the parameters of the resol of the your the, the board's re regulations um, they're welcome to do that and it, it does sound to me like they might put together some informal you know panel they can yeah yeah there is some committee, there is some association, uh, there's some acronym in here. So, no, I think, because again, having having been involved in many discussions, you know, I was around with administration that created the whole bidding process for surf schools. So this has come a long way. And, and, and I, uh, from my personal observation and experience, I'm sure the chief can, can uh, agree. Um, there's a lot covered in here. Here it is, National Surf School Instructor. So it is a, there's a lot of stuff in here that wasn't just uh, covered in the past. So, Again, I think um, I'm confident with moving along because we got to start somewhere and see what happens. Um, and we can always fix it after. Rich, I, 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 I agree. And I think actually discussion that just occurred here um, can show the public just how much went into it. 
Um, so, so, you know, again, I don't have a problem and I didn't have a problem with the other um, one either because I voted for that to close that meeting and I will vote for this to close it as well. But I think the discussion that we just had goes to, goes to show the public, you know, whatever. And so if they do want to make comments afterwards, they still can, but it just won't be accepted. But, you know, especially if there is a way, as we know, in the resolution to move forward with having voices and being heard. So. And a mechanism for the public to, to, uh, compl you know, to, to lodge a concern or, or complaint, something that really, you know, it was, we would receive a complaint, but there was really nothing to, 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 for the law enforcement to, to bounce it up against. Right. Now, if there is a, a concern by a resident or, or someone else about something, we can, we can look at whether or not people are complying to the rules and regulations that you may adopt. Um, and then if we need to adjust them or, and or uh, take whatever necessary action against the, uh, against the school that is not following uh, the procedures. Yeah, and also the self-policing, policing, as Alexandra said, too, is very important because we know that that, you know, the surf community and surfers in general usually usually like to self-regulate and self-police. Right. Yeah, and they they are they are really eager to get this right. They don't want to um, ruin this. I think they really consider they appreciate the board considering this, and um, I'm not going to speak for them, but I just get the sense that they don't want to mess this up, and they're they're going to take whatever rules that you give them and, and follow them pretty strictly. Cool. cool. And as old, uh, although I was very tempted, I did not, re you know, use the word of the day as the council did as Russell did with promulgate. So um, that seems to be the word of the day. Nice word, counselor. Okay. Uh, so should we, uh, Russell, we can uh, move forward uh, with, um, uh, have we made a, uh, with a motion? We, um, if the board is ready, we can entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Okay, I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, excellent. Thank you again, Russell, and thank you for your uh, explanation. Um, you know, we appreciate that. So. Uh, I, I will. I will also say that uh, Alexandra was, you know, and and. You know, and Julie both were kind of the point people. You know, oddly enough, I, I, I did attend all the meetings. Um, my participation in it was a lot of listening. Um, uh, you know, both Julie and Alexandra uh, kind of steered the committee, and then the committee uh, elected a chair and you know followed the lead of the chair. So it, it was a you know a, a team effort. That's right, and and thank you, Alexandra, for you know really working behind the scenes. Uh, to make sure that our uh, surf, uh, uh, surf legislation was done well, uh, that our chapter was amended correctly, and that our surf school uh, had, uh, had good uh, rules and regulations. And, and thank you for attending, uh, you know, all of those, uh, you know, surf committee meetings. As Russell pointed out, you know, they were definitely, um, you know, very passionate meetings. So thank you for being uh, the person behind the scenes uh, to get all that done. Um, we couldn't have done it without you, and we couldn't have done it without the serve committee and, and Julie and Russell. So thank you to everybody. So with that being said, Russell, um, we can move forward with uh, suggested resolutions. I'll let you take the first one. Okay, entertain a motion resolved that the reading of the minutes for the public session of April 9th, 2020 be dispensed with and that those minutes be accepted as filed by the village administrator and that the actions taken at that meeting be and hereby are ratified and approved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Entertain a motion resolved that the claims for the warrants dated April 21st, 2020, totaling $477,695.39, warrant number 14 of the general fund and $1,800 warrant number 11 of the capital reserve fund be audited and approved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, and a note on that, the uh, $350,000 of that uh, first warrant is our monthly uh, health insurance bill. Um, and the rest are uh, rest of the bills are just you know general uh, monthly bills. Uh, the warrant, as we are going to do going forward, is on our website. Uh, we do post we do post the warrant there as well. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Aye. 
uh, entertain a motion resolved that the Board of Trustee hereby approves the attached schedule of budget transfers to em eliminate line item over just for the period ending April 21st, 2020. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Russell, do we have that in the in the backup? We don't. I'm going to read it to you. Okay, thank you. Yep. So we're going to move uh, $1,500 into the building inspector's uh, contractual services and take $1,500 out of the building inspector's part-time uh, money. Uh, this was a situation in which the building inspector uh, had a couple of uh, surveys that needed to be done for purposes of, uh, of um, completing uh, his uh, invest, you know, not investigation, but uh, his work on a building permit. Uh, so it's just a little over what is the normal budget would be. Um, and there was money in the part time to uh, to cover that. And uh, the second is to move three thousand dollars from parks uh, into parks utilities from parks miscellaneous, uh, as we discussed uh, at the last meeting. And uh, in two ways, we uh, did have some changes in some utility costs in the parks department. Uh, recognized that there were uh, a, a couple of lights and poles in parks that. Um, DSC and G did not realize um, they were not billing us for. Uh, so we have made that, we did make an adjustment for the 2020 21 budget so that next year we will not have to make these uh, adjustments. So those are the two uh, budget transfers that uh, we're looking, we're requesting to do. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Uh, resolved that the board uh, entertain a motion resolved that the board of trustees hereby acknowledge that the financial records of the village justice court for the fiscal year ended may 31st 2019 were audited in accordance with auditing standards generally accepted in the united states of america so moved. is there a second second this is a uh, resolution that is um, that is mandated by by the state um with uh with village with ju all justice courts and essentially we're saying that we had an independent auditor come in and ask them to audit in accordance with the uh, uh, you know, approved auditing standards. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Entertain a motion resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby accepts the audited financial records of the incorporated village of Southampton as prepared by Sadie Levine, CPAs, for the fiscal year ended May 31st, 2019. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Entertain a motion resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby approves the Lung Cancer Research Association Stride for Life walk run on August 9th, 2020. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Entertain a motion resolved that the Board of Trustees hires Joseph Prokop, Esquire, uh, to represent the village at the village general election on Friday, June 19th, 2020, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. at the Levitas Center, Pond Lane, Southampton, at a rate of $200 per hour. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Second. Um, just so Russ, everyone knows. Can I ask this? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You, yeah, before, you remember, I was going to ask. Yep. Is there is a date, uh, you know, we still have June 19th on this? Has there been discussion? Any insight you got to that? I mean, obviously, we're doing it, and then we have to do it just in case, but. Clearly, everything's still up in the air as far as setting up for the election. I'll make two comments, and then uh, I'll, I'll maybe uh, counsel, who I know is on, has been on a lot more calls with the state than than I have. Uh, number one, as of as of right now, the um, uh, the date is still the same. Um, there, you know, obviously the process is in is on freeze or in pause. I guess is the right word in the state. Uh, however, the dates have not been changed. Um, and the other comment that I wanted to make was that uh, it does say that our election is from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, Joe generally will give a call in the morning. If things are set up and, and are in, in good shape, then uh, he, he generally doesn't come until late afternoon. So it, it, it's not a full day of, of, of Joe. He is available. Um, and however, it, it, it's also not necessarily wow. a full day of him being there. So. Wow, we got a lawyer giving us a break. Wow. <laughs> uh, 
Um, with that said, maybe maybe council would who who has Council's again work. spent spent an awful lot of time on the phone uh, could give us a little more insight on what's happening with elections. <laughs> so I, I wish I could give more insight, but we are living right now under gov gubernatorial fiat with regard to these changes under uh, the executive law. So the only thing we know is that the, that is the date of the election. There's no clarity on petitions. There's no clarity on due dates. There's no clarity on um, uh, anything that has to do with the election run-up that we're used to in, in our normal election law world. So it is still very much in flux. Uh, the, I, I anticipate that we're going to hear something this week because I know that they've had a working group on it. So uh, probably by Friday, we'll have some more update, and I'll make sure Russell gets that and circulates that to everybody. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, all right. I, I, Entertain think, I think people might have been on mute by accident, so. Okay. Yeah, I only heard two, so I, I want to hear at least three, <laughs> three eyes. <laughs> Uh, I, I didn't hear. Right, I didn't hi. hear. Aunt. Okay, got it. Okay, uh, third. Hi. Thank you. My internet's going in and out. I have big black clouds above me. Just so okay. You know. All right. <laughs> um, understandable. <laughs> Uh, entertain a motion resolved that the board of trustees hereby adopts a local law number two of 2020, amending section 80-1N of chapter 80 of the Village Code to regulate surfboarding on Ocean Beach. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further questions? Trustee Estremsky. Aye. Trustee Allen. Aye. Mayor Warren. Aye. Trustee Parrish. Aye. Trustee Palero. Aye. Okay. Entertain a motion resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby adopts a local law number three of 2020 amending section 80-1A1 of chapter 80 of the Village Code to regulate surf schools on Ocean Beach. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Trustee Estremsky. Aye. Trustee Allen. Aye. Mayor Warren. Aye. Trustee Parrish. Aye. Trustee Palero. Aye. So I'm going to I'm going to not read this entire um, resolution, but obviously we'll probably have some questions when we get to the second. Where's the Board of Trustees enacted a local law amending Section 80-1A1 of the Village Code to require licenses for the operation of surf schools on beaches within the village, and whereas the local law authorizes the village administrator to issue and suspend said licenses, licenses, and whereas the newly amended Section 80-1A1 authorizes the Board to enact regulations and requirements for the issuance and maintenance of said licenses, now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby adopts the following requirements and regulations that shall take effect immediately. And be it further resolved that this resolution shall take effect immediately. No, you're not going to pull this. Is there a is there a mo uh, is there a motion? <laughs> there was, and I second. Okay, all right. Any discussion? A lot okay. here, but it's good. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, does does the board want to set an application fee for the for the license? Good question. That's done by separate resolution, but you might want to put some thought into what the what that amount will be. What yeah, did I, the committee say they didn't give a number. Okay, they left it to the discretion of this board. Okay. Okay. Do we have any comparisons versus other municipalities that do this across the island or out in the East End? I'm not aware. But I could ask yeah. the committee okay. if they know of any other municipalities that have this process in place. What's the current Russell now that we get? Well, we've gotten between, you know, two thousand twenty five hundred dollars um, in the past, um, you know, for surf schools. And when does that start? Does that start effective May fifteenth, or does it start? You know, could it be April fifteenth or what? No, uh, you know. I don't think that any of them are going to start, uh, you know, prior to, you know, weekends, you know, it, you know, after Memorial Day, I would, I would, would be my 
would be my guess. And then, you know, weekdays, um, once school is out. But do we have, like, previously before, was there any type of, you know, start date, stop date, or no? Just sort of, you know, when they got it, then they started, and then Yes, it was. There, there was a start date that was from uh, after Memorial Day through, uh, through Labor Day. Um, last year, we did extend licenses and allow there to be um, uh, lessons on weekends in September. Okay. And I think... Uh, Trustee Parrish, to your question, I think it's worth noting that for, for, for a series of years, um, only one person, only one organization actually submitted, you know, a bid. Um, and, and the, you know, whatever the, the numbers that Russell just explained were pretty much the numbers that came in from that. Um, you know, from, from your, from your um, take on these meetings, Russ, and anybody else who sat in them and, and Alexandra, could we anticipate a more vibrant and, and lively bidding process going forward? I think so. Sure. Well, again, I don't think when what we're looking to do is not necessarily, we're not looking to have a, a bid. What we're, right. we're, we're looking for is to be able to accommodate instead of there being one surf school with say 30, uh, you know, to 40 students, <laughs> we're breaking it up into, you know, I'll say three, potential surf schools with a limit of only 12 per school. So the same number of students, but a much more fair and, uh, uh, and a more manageable way for these lessons to be given. Right. Some right. of the complaints that we got, or the majority of the complaints we got, weren't so much with the, with the actual students who were getting the particular attention in the lesson, it was the rest of them that were waiting for their turn. So one of the things that this committee did was they did a they did a teacher to student ratio that essentially is giving you know you know full attention to everyone who's who's surfing and and so so those so that you know the kids are kind of going off on their own or different types of things or or letting surfboards go um, you know a lot of that is 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 being covered by the regulations right so. Um, you're right. I'm sorry. I didn't do that because that's the whole. So is, is, is the max at three? Is that um, yeah. three participants, three schools? Or one, it's it, one to three. One to three uh, teacher student ratio. So a maximum of 12. All right. So then going back. So the number we received was because it was a bidding process. So now we've moved the bidding process. So then I guess it comes down to what fee we can assess to each applicant. Right. Correct. Except that if I could, I'm sorry, but there are. I believe that the committee did recommend no more than three schools participating. And so there is a chance that there may be more than three applicants. Thank you. Okay. I guess that's what I was kind of getting at. Eventually. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, some weeding out is going to have to be done by us potentially. Yes. And, then, and with, and with that, what will, will we go beyond three? Do we have a criteria? I mean, how we, I guess we'll just worry about that when we get to it. Just, I think I think that one of the things that um, you know will be interesting to see is that it is fairly difficult to get the insurance and to go through what it takes to actually put on a school. If you recall last year, we really we thought that we were going to have a you know a number of people apply, but once they saw what we what it is and the cost of 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 you know insuring and protecting and and the type of people that they have to have on staff, um, I think it you know I think. There be going to be a lot of people who are interested in doing it, but I think once they read the fine print, are going to realize that um, they're probably better off working for one of these established schools um, than going off on their own. It, it's kind of difficult to do if you're not if you've not already established as a as a as a as a surf school. Okay, thank you. Could I also just add that um, in, in the resolution that has in 1A application, that the application will be submitted on or before May 1st, 2020, that's obviously going to be a little tight. So you, you may want to uh, push that back to June 1st, 2020. Or else. I agree. Thank you, Brian. Okay. All right. So there was a uh, motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> okay. Next Is one. That the amended resolution, the amended um, date for June 1st? 
do we need to do that, Brian, or can it can the village administrator? You could you could make that change. We 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 put that change in before we voted on it. So with, with that correction, really not really an amendment because we didn't pass it. So with that correction, it's uh, it was passed. Okay. Scrivener's right. Is that the word? That's right. That's right. <laughs> there, there you go. These words. Russ, you can do whatever you want. Okay. How's that? Good. <laughs> no, no, thank you. <laughs> Entertain a motion resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby approves that a valid beach parking permit must be displayed in or on a motor vehicle parked or standing in or upon the parking facility at Cooper's Beach during weekends and holidays from May 23rd, 2020 through June 13th, 2020, and on a daily basis commencing June 20th, 2020 through and including September 7th, 2020. So moved. Is there a second? So, so, so I have a want... quick uh, discussion item here. Do we... You might be getting to this, but it could make sense actually to change this resolution. It says um, at our parking facility during weekends and holidays from May 21st through June 21st. But given the situation that we're in now, it actually could make sense to make it daily starting May 23rd. And I would love our board to just kind of consider that, um, you know, change. So just real quick on... It is da it, it is daily for uh, beginning May 23rd for any all of our other beaches that they must have the sticker. However, Cooper's because of the fact that we staff it, staff, staffing level, and we would not it, it would, we would not be able to appropriately staff uh, Cooper's Beach to be open um, daily in uh, you know during that time period. Uh, that would be the only encumbrance on 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 doing that um obviously we're only talking about parking and you know clearly if someone is parked there and and code enforcement or someone rides through and sees that they do not have the appropriate sticker um you know you know that yeah. could could happen but cooper's is different because of the uh attendant that's, that's epic yeah we can't get bill hatchwick to come in that soon right <laughs> but um my point is this actually would give us a little more um, you know, obviously there's been some complaints that there's too many cars, too many people. Uh, this might actually allow us to, um, you know, limit the number of people on a daily basis. Uh, once it gets a little nicer, again, it's a discussion item for the board, but. Um, <clears throat> comes an enforcement issue. I don't really want to go down that road. Any other comments? So Jesse, you're looking to start it when daily? May 23rd, like it, it says May 23rd and June 13th. Um, on uh, weekends and holidays, you have to have the beach sticker. Uh, this, what the change, you know, we, we might consider making is that we should actually have the beach sticker starting on May 23rd for Coopers, um, simply because, uh, you know, we don't, we don't want people parking too close together. We could be out of, you know, we could be out of the woods. We might not be out of the woods by then. Um, you know, chances are, uh, you know, the coronavirus will, will still be with us in some form by May 23rd. Um, we hope that things have changed, but, but ultimately, um, you know, to, um, you know, this would essentially um, kind of continue our, our social distancing moving a bit forward. But you know. would, would then, based on the fact that if the governor opened up May 15th, would people then be able to come to Village Hall and buy those daily passes and still be able mm -hmm. to go there? And I mean, is that something that would be able to happen? Would people, would people be able to buy daily passes at some point? Uh, I'll let I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to answer and, and then make another statement. Yes. Uh, daily passes are available at village hall. So there certainly could be a sign there that says that you need to have a, a parking pass. Um, the, the issue would then be if we are still in yeah. a situation in which we're limiting the number of people who come, then we don't know how many daily passes we can sell or not sell because we don't know how many people who have seasonal passes are there. I might say that I think the mayor um, may have a, uh, this may be a good idea, but what I was wondering is that we're going to probably know by our first meeting in May, whether or not we're still pausing or not, or what our rules are. So we certainly could offer a resolution on our first meeting in May doing exactly what the mayor is recommending. And it would still be in time for that, for, for the time frame. Uh, you know, from Memorial Day through when school gets out. So, so we could probably still accomplish that and have time to evaluate how we do it. 
So what are you saying? We pass it as is, but we can amend it later? You wouldn't necessarily have to amend that. What you would do is just, just pass another resolution, essentially stating that, you know, due to the following circumstances, that this is what we're doing. Um, I, again, I'll ask Brian if to weigh in. And again, I'm not trying to undo what mayor is thinking, but I'm trying to think of how we could kind of look at it from a couple different angles. I, I, that's fine. If the board wants to pass a resolution uh, a ch making that change is suggested by the mayor, we could do it now. We could do it later. I think the logistic question of getting access to the permits might be something that would require a little bit more to, to think out maybe the next meeting. But but uh, yeah. as outlined by Russell, that, that, that procedure is perfectly fine, too. I mean, we're talking about a couple weeks here, a few weeks. I don't, you know, I, I, I'm fine leaving it as is because, again, you have the access to permits from the average person. Uh, could, again, it's a little fluid, may be impactful, may not be, we don't know. We can address that later. And then it's about a staffing issue, um, which, which is really what a, the, the, the main, you have to people, I know, I, I know where the suggestion, I know that I understand where this is coming from because of our current situation. Um, but again, the, the reason these dates exist and have existed is it's because of a staff at Cooper's anyways, it's a staffing issue and, and it's getting our summer staff, which is again, high school and college kids. Now, the caveat is that they are mostly home and maybe we can staff it, but I don't want to bet on that. Cause again, there's a reason why this has been in uh, a place for so long. Um, and I, I don't think there's any reason to change it when we can do it after the fact. Yeah, it's so pretty, look at pretty the next bad. I, I would say leave it alone as it is with the dates. Um, and, and again, it, it's, it's, <laughs> I don't mean it's like a broken record, but you're getting punitive. Uh, you're telling somebody who's not a, a, used to having to have that daily pass or whatever during those time frame since, well, basically forever. And all of a sudden comes back and has a ticket on your window. Again, I don't think that's a route we need to go. <clears throat> Just one opinion. Yeah, I got no problem talking about it at the first meeting in May. I think it's something that, you know, based on where we are, it's something to look into. Um, yep. just to keep that open. Right. We might have to amend, we might have to amend this thing altogether based upon some guidance Correct. that we get from the Correct. governor. Right. That's what I'm saying. I think they, don't amend, you know, right now where we're at, we're at we, we stay status quo until we need to not be status quo. Okay. okay. I mean, right, would good. we want would we want to just even not not pass this resolution and hope that we find out more guidelines, you know, for our next May meeting um, and and that way we're not amending anything or changing anything we just skip over this one now and and we will have more guidelines then and we can still i mean we still would have it in place um because our meeting is you know earlier than than the 21st or third or whatever i think andrew we have to pass something because let's face it people have already shelled out money for passes and i don't think that would be fair to say you know that's based on these guidelines so i think we you know again my opinion is i think we could just pass it as normally would be this is a pretty innocuous thing if conditions uh should arise that force us to change it it's an easy change but i just think you know the the process already in place as russell has said there's been uh, quite a few people who, who have ordered you know that's the resident uh, resident stickers, but the paid ones. So, um, and why? Because these rules exist. So, I, well, Russell, do we have to do we have to pass this tonight, or do we make a contingent upon next meeting to see where if there's any better direction? Like, what is Brian, or is it sort of one of those things where it doesn't really matter? My, my my take on this is if this is our standard operating procedure that we've done forever, and people have bought their their stickers based upon this presumption. If it just memorializes our standard operating procedure, let's adopt it. And if we need to tweak it, come forward. If something else changes, we can do that at the next meeting. Thank Thanks. you. All right. All in favor. Aye. 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 <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Where is the tentative budget? was presented to the Board of Trustees at a regular Village Board meeting on March 24th, 2020, and whereas a public hearing was held on April 9th, 2020, to which amendments were approved. Now, therefore, I entertain a motion resolved that the Board of Trustees makes the following additional amendments to the 2020-2021 tentative budget. Rename account A101047 to the Board of Trustees Special Projects. Increase Board of Trustees Special Projects $505,000. Increase highway contractual services, $150,000. Increase contingency, $250,000. Decrease mayor's 
contractual services, $155,000. Decrease environmental professional services, $350,000. Decrease legislative contingency, $400,000. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Sorry, second. I was on mute. Okay. <clears throat> there discussion. Yeah, I guess I'll start off with this since I was the one that uh, sent the email. I sent out two emails, one, you know, on April 9th and one on um, Sunday, the 16th, I'm sorry, the 16th and the 19th, I sent two emails to the board. Uh, on the meeting of the 9th, uh, when this was, you know, brought up, I had a nice dialogue with the mayor, I asked him some questions about, you know, some of the changes he did, he elaborated on all those and, uh, you know, took that in and digested a lot of that and, you know, was able to reach out to some people in other municipalities and bond uh, agents. And, you know, one of the things we discussed at that April 9th meeting was the effects of moving or creating uh, new accounts in relation to bond ratings. And, um, you know, uh, Brian weighed in on that, Russell weighed in on that and brought up some good points, which I believe you did also at times. And I just really thought about it hard and really wanted to go through and see you know, where we were going. And um, what I decided to do was do uh, just reach out to the board with a couple different thoughts. One of the first ones was, you know, no, noticing that it was always called the trustee special projects. And, you know, being that I've been in here for what, eight or nine months now, realizing that everything is a board of trustees, I figured a quick thing to do would be to change that. That way, it's not looking like the, the trustees are the only ones that are making big capital expenditures because it's a board that votes on where all the money goes. So I felt changing that was a good way to, you know, make it where it's all inclusive. Uh, secondly, um, when it came to some of the um, other accounts that were created, um, I kept on getting, you know, conversations with people that, that have been in this field and, you know, they kept on saying, look, you know, it's red flags and bonds. And I know the, the administrations, you know, prior to this to get us up to a, a double or triple A bond rating, you know, that's really important. And, uh, you know, going forward in an environment where we don't know where we are with revenues and with a pandemic and a crisis, I just really started to think about, you know, the responsibility and where it is as people who sit up in these chairs is it's to the taxpayer. And the thought process was, was if taking away something from, let's say, mayor contractual or special uh, legislative contingency and or environment, is that going to say that we're not in favor of that? Um, I really thought about that and said that that really doesn't, portray what this board is doing. Um, so, you know, we do have the right to take any of that money and put it in those places because up until this point, we all have been very, very, very supportive of all the environmental measures. So, you know, it was one of those things where if I had to sit there and tell a taxpayer at some point, eight, nine months from now, oh, sorry, you know, we lost our good rating because we had more accounts than we should have and during the environment, it just didn't work out. That was something that I really thought heavily about because again, the responsibility is to the taxpayer. And uh, knowing that at any moment, even tonight, we can earmark X amount of dollars to an environment, X amount of dollars to this. But making sure that contingency account, which already existed, if we add more to that, we are then preparing for anything that comes at us. And, and again, through what Russell said and what I said at the April 9th meeting, this budget is a good budget. The number underneath the tax cap it's just that it wasn't a necessity to create these new accounts. And the fact of the matter is understanding that a lot of things get looked at with a lot of movements. I felt that bringing it back to a practice that has been successful was prudent. And uh, that's where I stood. So I was the one that, you know, talked to the administrator and let him know that these are the things that I'd like to throw out for a, uh, uh, resolutions tonight. Good. I think that's that's nicely laid out. I I, I just have a question, um, and and again, I know it might go back and forth, but but to the mayor on it with with regard to the environmental, um, how was that being well? How would that have been overseen 
and then also where where today you know because we do have environmental services and and things paid for so um i mean that money is coming out of of projects today correct for also could you maybe explain um how we currently pay for environmental projects uh well it can come out of a couple of places so uh trustee special projects has been used for uh for the sake of argument um dr gobler's study that uh that, that the board uh, approved um you know other env environmental things have been capital projects so uh it, it it can come from there the other the other thing that's come out of uh special projects is the uh um, with regards to environmental is the matching part of a grant uh, that we would have. So in answer to your question, um, that's where environmental things would come out of. Uh, they also, you know, again, they're crossover on environmental things. They, they can come out of the highway budget if it's a drainage, if it's a drainage, uh, in, you know, that we feel is, a, is an environmental issue. So... Uh, those are the places that we're Yeah, going. and again, if I can just, you know, add on a couple things, you know, the villages are in this rating for a reason. Um, and I believe that this board is going to continue to, to, to honor that and even improve it, you know. And uh, so I just, again, keep on going back. If this money can be earmarked through these accounts already, again, tonight, next week, there's not a problem that we can't say based on, you know, as we get, <clears throat> obviously, first and foremost, being knowing where we are and understanding that, you know, freezing some discretionary will be probably a good idea until the end of August when we do get in our taxes and we figure out, you know, as we get through the New York State pause, where we're, we have our revenues coming in because there is criminal courts, beaches, and the, you know, real estate taxes are the biggest one. And, you know, we don't know where we are with those yet. So at any particular time, this board with this board of trustee account can, you know, earmark that money to a environmental study on Old Town, Agawam, all sorts of things. There, all those possibilities are there. What I just kept on thinking about, what I kept on learning was that this has been well earned by the village to keep their rating and why, what's the necessity of jeopardizing that, that rating at this particular point with an unknown that we hear every day on, you know, from the state to the county calls about where we are. So that's what I wanted to just talk about tonight. Are there any additional comments? Okay, Trustee Yastrzemski. Well, I, no, well, oh, sorry. I comments. I apologize. Um, I'll comment. And again, um, good point from Trustee Parrish. And I will make a few, nothing new. My story is pretty much the same. Um, I'm not sure exactly where it jeopardizes the rating. I understand because changes and so forth that they seem capricious, but I don't think. Uh, I've been around and watched our ratings improve, so I don't necessarily know that will make an impact, uh, especially if it's clearly defined and used and appropriated properly. But that said, um, I said originally, there was, a, there, was a, there was a budget proposed, and I believe public hearing passed last week, closed on it, and these were uh, resolutions to amend it. Um, quite simply, I don't have a problem with the way the original budget was proposed. Uh, which was prepared with all of our input, our supervisors, and certainly us as trustees, compiled diligently, vigilantly, uh, with, uh, with a lot of talent by Russell, our administrator, and then, of course, ultimately approved by our mayor. And, um, and yes, there were a couple of things added, um, but having now this being my, I guess, 12th budget under now a third administration, I uh, made it quite clear this is nothing unique. I've seen it. I've seen it done in different ways, quite honestly. <laughs> um, I, actually, I actually find this to be a rather transparent way. The numbers, quite honestly, don't, really don't uh, bother me because um, it's, as, as I think to use another person's words, it's shuffling of the deck chairs. Um, 
And at the end of the day, it doesn't give anybody or a group of people any more authority to expend resources, village resources, any easier uh, than it could or one could before. And that's the important part um, to me, one of the important parts. So um, the line items, again, are nothing new. I think there's actually a little transparency to it by creating a line item that says funds are for a particular purpose. And since it was actually outlined by the mayor, um, that is what the mayor pretty much ran on and, and told people that it was a very big priority, environment and so forth. Um, so creating a line item for that, again, doesn't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I've seen many ways things have been expended over the years in different budgets that have been done with a line item and without a line item. So again, that's, that's semantics to me. Um, and I'll just close with out of 12, my, this being my 12th budget and my third mayor, um, the previous two mayors, um, whatever they, I, I passed the budget they wanted to do. And I'm not going to change that now. This is our mayor now. These are things he, he has articulated why he wants to do them. And uh, I have no problem with extending the same privilege to this mayor as I've done for previous two mayors. That's all I got. All right, Rich, thank you for that. Um, all very good points. I guess, you know, if, if we do, my, my question would be then, you know, if we do have 350 for the environment, um, how, who is in charge of that money? Um, who, who decides where it gets spent, how it gets spent, and what are the priorities that are utilized of that 350000 Good question. Russ, could you elaborate on any part of that? Yeah, I, well, the part, the part I will state is that like any other department, when we have the organizational meeting, uh, the mayor assigns. Uh, well, then well, let me I'd just like let me go. Let me go hear what the mayor is thinking with with regards to that, because it's very hard to approve for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars when we're going to wait until July first to find out how that money can and will be spent. So I'd love, I'd love to get. A preview, if I may. Um, well, I don't. I don't have any, I don't. Have any, anyway, we, we did. Um, we did uh, discuss this at at the two uh, prior hearings. Uh, there's a whole host of of environmental projects that we can work on, uh, including uh, bioremediation, floating islands, uh, including uh, studies for permeal reactive barriers, which is a new technology. I'd love to be uh, some of the first, one of the first municipalities. Um, you know, in the state uh, to really have a great PRB. Uh, we've discussed uh, using uh, various uh, other technologies. Uh, and, um, you know, obviously we're ready to adopt the Lake Agawam uh, DEC uh, action plan. Um, and if you obviously read that plan, you know, you'll see the whole host of things that we need to do. Trust me, $350,000 has not even come close to what we need to do, but at least it's a start. It's, I understand it's a start and I understand there's a lot, but yeah. who has the responsibility for saying we're going to do what project? Um, what are your priorities for that? Because I have spoken to the Lake Agawam Conservancy and I've spoken to the water uh, committee on this. And when we spoke about their priorities um, for their budget, they weren't at $350,000 for the next little bit. So I'm just, again, trying to see, you know, who has the right to say we're going to expend this money or who says where the priorities are for expending this money? Because I think that's very important. And again, my role here is to protect the residents of this village. And how, if, it's, if it's kept where the board gets to vote and pass on it, then I feel very good about it because there is yet to be an issue on the environment that this board has not passed. And I am just trying to see under this new environment, environmental line, who gets to say that? Is it, you know, who is it the board that gets to pass the expenditures of those money? Is it one person that you are going to put in place on July 1? 
um, how, how, are there, how are the decisions made? And for both the, the priorities of it and also the spending of it. You know, ultimately, you know, and we'll get to this, uh, you know, ultimately, I am in the minority in this board. We are in the minority of this board. Uh, so ultimately, the board is dictated by three people, dictated by you, dictated by Mark, dictated by Kimberly. These are your decisions here. It was my job to prepare the budget. We had ample opportunity to make changes. Now it's, you know, we're making the amendments and, and you can do whatever you want. I mean, it's your board. Mr. Uh, Mayor, can I ask you a couple questions? Did you ever reach out to me and ask me any questions about the budget? Absolutely. Uh, over and over and over again. I've showed up at your restaurant prior to, um, you know, prior to the coronavirus. Uh, we have called and called and called. Um, we, everyone knows how passionate we are about this topic. I, I have more to say later, but ultimately, um, uh, I over just, and over again. So, I just, I'm a little bit confused because, you know, showing up my store while I'm working is one thing. And, uh, you know, you have, and I was very busy that day. And I remember that was probably back in E probably even February or something. Um, but, you know, I got no response to emails. Um, I didn't even know you were doing the budget. Um, I was under the assumption it was Russell. And then, you know, probably a few days before it came out, I was told that you did it. You know, so there's a lot of things here at times where, you know, the lack of communication. And, uh, you know, it's one of the things that I feel that I've always felt to be pretty strong with when I wanted to, you know, talk to you. You and I have had some good discussions and emails regarding some other things. Um, Again, if this is something where you're looking at as that myself and two other board members are blocking you, I think that you're reaching. And, you know, you've gone around, you've said this before to people, you were on the radio the other day, and it's getting, it's getting offensive because, again, when you go to the record, the one thing I did vote against you on was the first set of lawyers. And since then, I've basically been most of uh, if we go to the record, you'll probably be able to see it. And, you know, the, the, the common theme I keep getting from people is that, you know, we're blocking you. And, you know, it's just, it's getting, it's getting redundant. And I feel moving forward, again, I said that, you know, right before the last meeting about working together smarter. I know what you want. I know your passion. I've seen it. I've heard it. I understand it. However, again, me coming up with these amendments was not a shot at you. And the personal feelings here have got to be put aside because, you know, whether or not you go around and call me the person that, you know, that is in control, that's not me. I'm one. And, uh, you know, we got to be able to stop with this and really say, hey, look, what's best for the village is what's best for the village. And as people that were voted in, we have to make sure that we think about the necessities of things versus what we feel might look good. Jesse, you know you have an aggressive agenda with, with Agawam and, and all the other things, and you will have everybody backing you on that. You know, you guys have been doing it. Kimberly's been with you on that. Uh, Andrew has been, uh, I believe, to a meeting. Um, so, you know, to sit there and start getting into this right now is sort of, it's, it's just not, not the point. You know, we're in a crisis. We're in a pandemic. We're going ahead with this budget like this, the way that with the amendments, does not take anything away from you because you have done a lot with this Lake Agalon Project Conservancy. So, you know, just to, just to throw that out there is just one thing I had to really just, you know, let you know. All right, thank and, you and for, for sharing that. We appreciate your thoughts. Um, uh, so with that being said. No, I, may, I, may I say something, please? You have the votes. May I say something, please, Mayor Warren? Please. So in the original, so the, as Russell said, you know, it's, is the mayor, has the, is the mayor still present? Um, I have diabetes. I'm just checking my blood sugar. If you're, I, I can hear you though. Okay. Anyhow, as Russell said, you know, shifting the monies around is, is 
less of a concern in, my, in our view, it's really having a definitive list of priorities, right, that we all agree upon. And we as a board all agree that the environment is critical, right? We've never voted against the environment, first of all. And second of all, we have $350,000 earmarked and we have another $175,000 that was earmarked in the press release. And then we have another $185,000 that was earmarked in the mayor's contractual services. So let's tease through this because what are we talking about in terms of priorities? I mean, you talk about the bioremediation, the PRBs, the floating islands. The floating islands is not a priority even on the DEC HAB plan. If we wanna talk about a priority, it's the $175,000 village sewer study and creating a sewer district. At our last meeting, we approved $40,000 to H2M. Hopefully we can push that into this year's budget. So then you say to yourself, well, what else is there left on $175,000? Is it legal? We already pay for legal as we go through the year. Brian had already indicated it's sixty-five dollars to $75,000. We're not going to pay that all at once. So there's the one seventy-five dollars if we need it all in this year. So let's go to the three fifty. dollars What do we want to pay in the three fifty? dollars and what's it going to cost? Is it the groundwater flux dredging feasibility study for Lake Agawam? Is it? Because if it is, that was already paid for fully with grants and a match by the Lake Agawam Conservancy. Thank you, Lake Agawam Conservancy. If you want to talk priorities, when Andrew and I reached out to the committees and the Conservancy, one that jumped up was the hydrogen peroxide treatment. The Conservancy is going to take the first stab at it and the second, second one they want us to pay, which is $80,000. So of the 350, we're at $80,000. What's the rest, what are the rest of the projects? What do you have, what measures and projects and actions do you have in mind for the 350, the 175, and the 185? That has never been communicated. It's, it's bioremediation, PRBs, this and that. But what are the definitive top priorities? It's not that hard and we're all on the same page. We should focus on the two or three and run with it. But you earmark the right, around, right amount of money for it. And as Trustee Parrish said, we don't know what as it was hidden under a rock. We don't know what's coming our way. So you don't want to load a lot of money into something until you have real projects behind it. And we know there are a number of priority projects and of the top priorities that were referenced, they don't even come near 350, let alone 175 or 185. And to add to that, um, you know, the mayor's contractual services line item had $185,000 set aside in it. The surf school item that wanted, you wanted to come out of that is $5,600. We want to do the right thing, but that leaves $179,000. And by the way, if you benchmark each and every town across the United States, that number is never more than $5,000. So all we want to know is what are your priorities? And if you have priorities we don't know about, and there's a dollar amount next to it, let's, let's understand that. We all care about the environment. We want to make this happen. We are not blocking you. We want to move this as quickly as possible. And quite frankly, when we voted for H2M last week for $40,000, hopefully we can put that in this year's budget. And then we'll even have a little more. But you need to lead us through your environmental and other project priorities. So we need to work on this together. Okay. Thank you very much, Trustee Allen. Are there any additional comments? Okay. Trustee yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Mayor. Well, I was going to make the, uh, uh, well, we made the motion, so. Would you like to say anything, Mr. Mayor, on, on what these priorities are and, and, and amendments can be made to resolutions? So, I mean, would you like to share anything with, with us, with the trustees? Uh, we've, we've had a, let's, I'd, rather, I'd rather just uh, at this point, we can move forward uh, with, uh, with the vote. We've, you know, uh, so, uh, Russell, did we, did we, Make the motion yet? There was a motion and a second. Okay. But do we want to take time to go through this and, and change this based on your priorities? 
we are at this point, you know, we are, um, you know, Russell, can you maybe just walk us through the way that the budget works here as far as the timeline goes? So the, there will be a, uh, the next resolution would be a resolution to um, adopt uh, the 2020-2021 operating budget um, as amended. Uh, if, if obviously there was one amendment on April 9th, um, there is a proposed amendment tonight. <clears throat> if, uh, if that passes, then the 2020-2021 budget will be the budget as amended. If that resolution does not pass, the uh, budget reverts back to the tentative budget that, um, that the mayor presented at the March 24th meeting. What was the amendment on the ninth? Amendment on the ninth was uh, uh, we needed to add money into utilities, which we spoke about earlier in both the parks department and uh, the fire department, because uh, we we found that we have not we did not adequately budget, and we were able to get a savings in the radio operators' personnel services because of the retirement of two right. okay, radio I operators. Yeah. So is that part of this vote tonight or we already we already resolved that you resolved it. However, what I will say is that if this if the if this amendment passes, then the next vote on the on the next resolution would be inclusive of both amendments. Um, and if that does not pass, then it reverts to the tentative budget that does not have that original amendment in it. If this amendment does not pass. If this resolution does not pass and the next resolution does pass, then it would only uh, the budget would pass as amended only by the resolution at the last meeting. Gotcha. All right. So the first vote is voting on uh, resolution number 12 with these uh, proposed resolutions, correct? Proposed amendments, correct. Proposed amendments. I'm sorry. So the first resolution is on these proposed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Seven uh, increase and decreases. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Russell. All right, we ready to vote? I, if the mayor, I, I really, I mean, I am willing to listen. I am willing to hear what he would like to say if he would like to say anything with regard to it. Um, otherwise, you know, I, 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 I think that again, the money is there to be spent on, on things that the board feels is, is important. Um, but I also don't want the mayor to take this personally and, and, and stuff with regards to this, because I, I don't think that this is, this is again, not, this is not a board trying to block what he does. This is a board trying to understand the priorities that he has for him to elaborate those to us, um, and to the public for that matter, because one of the things that, that Russell, you stated was that under the organizational meeting on July 1st, we would understand how um, the environmental line items would be utilized. And all, all I've asked is to try and understand how that could be tonight so I could pass if, if, if I then agreed that $350,000 should be spent in environment, how it gets passed, how it gets, how it gets spent, and who gets to make that decision. And I still don't understand if we allowed an environmental line item, line item, who gets to make that decision and what the priorities are. I'm not opposed to them. I do think that they can work in other areas, um, but I'd love to hear how, how, that, how that gets done. Um, if I just can, I just wanna add, I, I just do wanna add, I do wanna add one thing. When I started to explain how the money was spent, um, I, didn't, I didn't quite finish. So I only got one part out. Keep in mind that all purchasing, no matter what line it comes out of, has to follow the village's procurement policy. So if in fact we're gonna enter into a contract, there are rules around how we enter into a contract. Um, there are rules as to how we would have to, you know, go out to bid on certain, you know, things. So what I do, what I, what I didn't get to say was um, as true in any line that we still have to follow village procurement. I just, that I think to be able to finish that statement was important. 
Thank you, Ross. Okay. So may I take the roll now? Okay. Man, Trustee, no. Trustee Yastrzemski. Nay. Trustee Allen. Aye. Mayor Warren. Nay. Trustee Parrish. Aye. Trustee Polaro. Aye. Okay. The motion is passed. We now entertain a motion resolved that the Board of Trustees hereby adopts the 2020-2021 operating budget as amended by resolution number nine of April 9th, 2020 and resolution number 12 of April 21st, 2020. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Um, Russ, again, clarity. So that's based on the, you know, the vote is is on the amended budget, correct? That is right. As amended by the two resolutions, one in the last meeting, which we discussed just mm -hmm. a few minutes ago, and this uh, resolution that was just passed, resolution number 12, um, that passed uh, just moments ago. Thank you. Okay. All right, so I'd like to make some, some comments before the, uh, the vote. Uh, first, we had a, a, a budget process as uh, you know, mandated by state law, uh, as, as uh, you know, shown in the New York State Controller's Guidelines. We adhered to that uh, budgetary process. We had a where there was ample opportunity uh, for uh, resolutions and amendments. We had our public hearing um, where there was ample opportunity for uh, amendments and updates. Um, and so obviously we are doing that, we did that tonight. But what I think is important for everybody who's watching tonight, for all of our supporters uh, who put us in office um, on our uh, forward platform um, to clean the problem, to revitalize our downtown uh, and to bring new people into our government, um, budgets are a contract. Budgets are a legislative agenda. And what you just witnessed tonight is that you saw three trustees go against the budget office of the village, uh, go, go against the mayor that you elected um, to strip away $350,000 from the environment, to strip away $155,000 out of the mayor's contractual budget for special projects uh, that could include uh, revitalization projects, uh, funding for revitalization grants, uh, for a uh, update to our master plan that for months we've been trying to get through. Um, including a rendering and a visual for what our downtown will look like in the future. And it doesn't look very good today. Um, so we'd like to see what it'll look like in the future. I think that's critical. Um, and there is a whole host of environmental projects that we'd like to do. And by the way, $350,000 doesn't even come close to the amount of money that we need to be putting into, into our environment. What's worse is that money was then stripped from the environment and then put right into the highway budget. For what? For paving? Uh, the, the issue, and, and, and not to mention paving, we're talking about we need permeable paving, which is way more expensive than $175,000. And by the way, we did fund a sewer uh, uh, study. And so what are we going to pave over, um, over the, the streets when we, when we rip them up for the sewer system? We're going to undo our paving? I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so the fact that we have three members of our board um, just decide on the last minute to just strip away all of the work that we did to make this budget doesn't seem logical or right to me. Um, when we were elected, we were elected on a movement. We were elected to clean our lake, to revitalize our downtown, and you are witnessing right now three trustees to strip that away. And by the way, I'd like to know um, from our trustees right now, um, does anyone know how much, by a show of hands, does anyone know how much the tax levy went up this year versus last year? Can anyone raise your hand if you know it? I'm watching for hands. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I, I think that right now we're looking to, um, we have a, a resolution coming uh, forward. Yeah. This is not so much for, for grandstanding. And I, I, you know, I, I really don't think so because what you have witnessed um, is the public in, in the elected officials asking for clarification. I, I would like, with regards, I would like to, to finish. With regards I, to your Ryan, uh, council. agenda, and yet you I'm jumping in here explaining how you still, haven't, agenda, still haven't done and worked with the agenda. Brian, could you just kind of give us a little heads up on, on how the, the, um, the meetings are, should work? 
Well, we should, yeah, we should, obviously we just obey some level of uh, allowing the person who's speaking to speak and be recognized by the chair. That's all the parliamentary point I would just make during this uh, discussion. So I would, I would just simply, we're, we'll definitely open this up for discussion. I would, I would simply uh, like to, um, I would simply like to uh, just finish speaking prior to, uh, you know, I would just like my chance to speak. And then we could obviously give other people the floor. Um, and we'll give you more time, by the way, to determine what percentage our tax levy went up. Uh, you can look it up online. You can go on your Excel spreadsheets. Uh, and, and so we'll give you more time just to know how, what percentage uh, our tax levy went up. We'll give you some more time to look up uh, what our tax rate was. Or maybe just so, so you can let us know, because ultimately, th this budget that we put together was highly calculated. Uh, there was an initial budget. We actually increased the, the tax rate. Uh, we tapped out every single dollar that we could. We didn't need to tap out every single dollar we could. We tapped out every single dollar we could because we wanted to allocate and appropriate as much money for the environment as possible. And so um, I remember uh, a late professor of mine, uh, Joe Middleman at, uh, at university. Uh, he was actually very instrumental in rebuilding uh, the World Trade Center uh, on September 11th with Robert Silverstein. And he had this good phrase. He used to say, always ignore everything before the but. And what happened here tonight is simply our trustees, three of them, not our entire board, not the majority of our board, our trustees said, we're, in, we're for the environment, but this. We're for the environment, but we want it in the Board of Trustees special projects. We're for the environment, but we want it in highways. We're for the environment, but we don't know who spends it. And by the way, we should know this by now. Um, Russell pointed out how this process works. It's quite simple. It's a board vote. It's a resolution. You guys can change the budget anytime you want. Um, and that's how the process works. Now, um, going back to this point, we tapped out the budget for every single dollar we could. We increased the tax rate specifically for the environment. Now, that being said, um, we also, what also needs to be stated is that this, the reason why we wanted mayoral contractual expenses was simply because we wanted this master plan. And what you again watched here tonight to all of our supporters, what you watched is a board exercising their control. And this board is comprised of one political party it's comprised of the community party, which used to be the Citizens with Integrity Party. And so you've got one board, one political party controlling this village still to this day, controlling this village to the point where they're just modifying the budget. And by the way, going against all the best practices of updating the agenda. And back in December, I remember being lectured as to how we need to put things on the budget 24 hours in advance. Well, guess what? This did not go in the budget 24 hours in advance. So uh, maybe lesson learned here, but what the bad practices that we were doing in the past in 2019 are now the same practices that are we're doing in 2020. It's just those practices have shifted from me to you. So now that being said, again, um, this is a stripping of the mayoral's contraction. And, uh, and again, um, this, is a, this is just an exercise of authority here. Uh, and so we've got one political party, the community party, bankrolled by LLCs and corporations and real estate developers controlling this village still. And we are here, we're fighting for you. We're fighting for the budget. We're fighting for the environment. We're fighting for the downtown. And by the way, Mark, I'd like to mention, you're completely wrong when you say you're looking out for the bond rating because what bond ratings wanna see is they wanna see transparency. So they wanna see a line item uh, for environmental services so they know exactly where the money's going. They don't want the money hidden in the highway department. We don't even know what that money's going for. They wanna see transparency. That's recommended by the New York State Controller's Office. I think Russell and our counselor, Brian Eagle, would actually back that up. So what you're actually doing is making the budget more murky by passing that resolution instead of making it more transparent, which would get us more points on our bond rating. Oh, and by the way, um, when it comes to bond rating, uh, bond ratings like, I would imagine that if we had a booming, vibrant downtown, um, much of what has not happened over the last 14 years under the Epley and Irving administration, where our downtown has eroded into vacant storefront after vacant storefront after vacant storefront. So uh, we need a booming downtown. And to get that, we're going to need a master plan. We're going to need a sewer district. And we're going to need to get this done. We're not going to need three members of one political party usurping this board, ultra vires going at, you know, as, as was done earlier in 2019, we're going to need to get this done. And so I stand here today on behalf of every single one of those, every single one of my supporters, every single person that elected us and telling you that we completely disagree with what you just did. It was sneaky. You did it at the end and you stripped all the money from the environment. You stripped all the money of the mayor contractual service and you hit it in the highway department, by the way, which you control. 
So uh, that being said, that's what I've got tonight. I've got plenty of questions for you guys when it comes to the tax levy, because I'd like to know if you even know. I'd like to know what, if you even know what our taxes are this year, how much they went up versus last year. Uh, I'd like to know if you even know this stuff. But I've said what I had to say. I think I've made it pretty clear. We're going to vote no uh, on this budget. And, um, and that's that. This will be really the defining factor moving forward. The tax levy increase is 3.65%. And unfortunately, no, you did not wrangle everything out of there because we left, we left $22,328 um, under the cap. And with that, you could have added 22,000 more dollars somewhere and we didn't do that um, so that we could do it. Um, the permitted increase would have been 4.78% or about $1.1 million um, for a maximum of about $25.6 million. Um, so that is, you know, those are the figures there uh, to look at. Um, as for, it is my understanding that when a resolution is brought forth and discussion is had, that to me didn't sound too much like discussion. Um, and I apologize to the public for that because that was not how discussion is supposed to occur. Discussion is supposed to occur a little bit more on how it was done in the last when we were asking for questions of the mayor um, on how things would work, what would do. Again, I think all of us said we were willing to change what was done, we just needed to hear from him how it was going to be done. And I still have not heard how it would be done and we would have to wait until July 1st and the organizational meeting to see how $350,000 would have been spent and where it would have been spent. Um, and, and I don't find that that is transparent. At least this way, when the money is in uh, board of trustees special projects. It is there for the board to decide, for all of us to decide, not just one person. And so that is what we are trying to do. That is what I am trying to do. And yes, it is to protect the residents. It is to look out for our bond rating. It is to understand where monies are going to be spent and how they are going to be spent spent and for all five of us to come to a consensus and an understanding for that. It is not just for one person to decide where and how things will be done. As I said in the past, just before, every environmental line item that has come up to a vote, we have all passed on a 5-0 vote. No one has stopped anything when it comes to the environment. And I don't believe that this board will stop going forward. I, do, I just don't. I think it's very important to all of us. And I know that the Lake Agawam Conservancy, when I have spoken to them, are very thrilled with what we are trying to do. I know the water quality is thrilled with what we are going to do. And I hope that the DEC will continue to be partners with us in all of the things that they want to do. Um, but, you know, this budget is exactly the same as it was before, the same dollar figures as it was. That has not changed, and it won't change on, on where or how money is spent. We just have to know the priorities of it. And so I think that for me, understanding the priorities and having the discussion with the Lake Agawam Conservancy and with um, the water quality to understand where their monies are and where they would like it to be spent um, gives us a good platform on how best to move forward with monies to be used in the environment. Um, the highway, as Russell mentioned before, the highway department adding money there for drainage, because the drainage could be things that could go to the environment. Um, doesn't have to just be an environmental line. We have, we have made payments to the environment in the past from the budgets that the boards have, have had in place. And this will be no different. 
And now I am going a little against what I had, what, what I had said before, and I apologize to the public. Um, but those are, those are my thoughts with regard to the budget uh, and how we are doing. So this is not a usurpation of power. This is trying to work together to all best understand what is going on. And I am sorry that the mayor feels that way. I really am. I, as I said earlier, this is not personal. This is not personal against the, against the mayor. I am not trying to attack him. I think he has done a lot of good. I think he is doing a lot of good. And I want to work, work with him for the environment. I just would have loved to have understand it a little bit more. Thank you very much. Are there any additional comments? Yes, this is Trustee Allen. I would like to comment, Mr. Mayor. So to the community, I think we want to tell you we're here for you to do the best we can for the village. And that means identifying those projects that can benefit the village to, its, to the best way possible. And with regards to the environment, we're all agreeing that the $175,000 village sewer study and, and sewer district creation is critical. We approved it at the last meeting. We were very happy that the mayor took the time to meet with the consultant that we had brought forward for many, many months. So we're all on the same page there. With regards to all of the other water quality initiatives, we definitely want the dredging feasibility study uh, that Chick Voorhees and a number of people are working on, but it's being paid for. So what's next on the list? Hydrogen peroxide. Let's, what's next on the list? Is it Floating islands, we're not hearing that. And I don't want to repeat myself, but the point is we as a board need to carefully pick projects that benefit you as a community. And we can't just set aside pockets of money for that arbitrarily. We have all the money. All we're trying to do is, is slot in our priorities and make them happen as quickly as possible. That's all we want to do. Yes, a village master plan. What a great thing. I've been talking about that with the planning commission, but we didn't really discuss it as a board. I've always been in support of that. And then let's talk about business recovery. I mean, wouldn't it be great if we could hire a marketing director that could PR our village and village brand? We, we might have an incredible pent up demand once this stay at home pause is lifted. We'd like to work further on our Southampton website and have it maintained and put and showcase all of our village businesses and other assets. We can have a big summer-wide village event. We have to connect differently with our customers now as a village. So our library and our arts institution, which by the way, drive 150,000 people into this village, they wanna partner with us to help businesses showcase themselves. We wanna sniff out every possible grant. Mr. Mayor, you introduced us to Nicole. She's already working with me on grants for the Business Recovery Committee. It's great, she's great. We want to attract different, uh, different types of businesses and we wanna do a survey to our current businesses because right now we know they're struggling with getting loans, but once that's out of the way, what are their other challenges? So we are all digging in and trying to work in the same direction. We're just asking for priorities. And with regards to bond ratings, by the way, there's no murkiness or, or in our transparency. We had a AAA bond rating over two years ago. So that was then and this is now, and not much has changed. And as Russell said, we have 1.2 to 2.2 2 million, Russell, correct me if I'm wrong, that we can Actually, you know, if we really want to put in an austerity budget, we can tackle that. So we can figure out how to do the right thing, but we have to figure it out together. You have great ideas, Mr. Mayor, like your gift certificate or gift card ideas, which we're going to discuss this Friday. Let's take some of those great ideas and work together. It's not a three to two board issue. It's a picking through this information together and doing it properly and reaching out to our citizens and our committees and the foundations that we already have to move forward. Thank you very much. 
Are there any additional comments? Russell, we can take a vote just so the audience knows uh, the tax levy went up by 4.7%, not up by 3.65%, just for those who are watching. Um, Russell, um, if you would like to take this to a vote, we can, we can do that. You might be on mute, Russell. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we, we, have a, we had a motion and a second, so roll call vote. Trustee Yastrzemski. Nay. Trustee Allen. Aye. Mayor Warren. Nay. Trustee Parrish. Unmute. Aye. Trustee Polaro. Aye. Okay. Um, the next resolution, where's the Board of Russell, Trustees? Yes, go ahead. Can I just interrupt? Uh, just, just to be clear on uh, 15, there is some um, comptroller uh, opinions and regulations that talk about the passing of the um, repeal, I should say, of the previous local law override. So uh, what I'd recommend on this is we have to do this before the 21st day of our, our fiscal year. So in, in this resolution, while it's anticipated that we will be uh, under the tax cap, um, what I'd recommend is we withdraw this resolution until we can notice it as a future public law to repeal that previous um, uh, override authorization. Okay. So um, anyone can, can say that they would like this resolution withdrawn? Is there a motion so, to it? Yep. Motion to I'm withdraw. To make a motion to withdraw based on council's advice. Okay. We don't need to vote on it, right? Once the, someone withdraws the resolution. Yes, correct. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. So we now have comments from the board. Uh, Trustee Yastrzemski is, is first. Thank you, Trustee Yastrzemski. <clears throat> um, well, barring the previous stuff, I just wanted to kind of get back to one of the things that isn't in the forefront of um, our, our daily lives and of course is the COVID and their response to it. And again, uh, I'm extremely proud of how our um, first responders and, and our, all our departments, our DPW and everybody in the village um, has, um, has responded to this and, and our case levels are, are low based on our preparation and how Village Hall and so forth have, have uh, been in the forefront of a lot of things. Um, you know, the, ne the next phase of all this is, is um, as we discuss in our many meetings and so forth and conference calls for the for the general public to realize is, is is an enforcement issue and that's always kind of scared me when people want to do things and 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 um worry about where the enforcement or how enforcement is going to get done and, and and i kind of find it scary when i do have a few national leaders um incentivizing and 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 certainly um recommending people uh to use one mayor or, or governor somewhere to snitch on your neighbors. So I would recommend, please people use some, um, some decorum, some, some dignity and, and some respect for the neighbors. Um, I don't think we need to be a society, a scared society of animal farm or Lord of the flies where we need to be pointing out everybody else's shortcomings. Um, that's what scares the hell out of me because that's what's occurring. And, um, uh, that's not productive, and I and I and I and I just hope people don't um, go too crazy with with jumping on a bandwagon, bandwagon of, of somebody because they witness somebody walking down the street without a face mask by themselves, walking a dog, which incidentally is not against the law, uh, but a lot of people don't realize that. Um, so that's really I just want to say as we as we get into the recovery process of this and analyzing our data and and where. Our leaders, which from the top down are the state, the governor, Cuomo, who's been very good at kind of dictating where we go. And then our calls with, with uh, county executive uh, Steve Ballone, uh, translating a lot of things and passing on things to us and then also running things up to the state. Um, it's been a very fluid process and a lot of things change daily. Quite honestly, they change hourly. Um, so it, it's been a very impressive process for the good of people. Um, but again, it has been a while, um, and I, I just hope and I implore people to use a level of respect and dignity, dignity to treating their, their fellow man and their neighbors in this very tight and small community. That's, so, um, that's really all I got. And be safe and be healthy. Thank you very much. 
for sharing that. Uh, next is Trustee Allen. Good evening again. I wanted to say happy Earth Day. We wanted to do some fun things, but obviously that will have to wait. Uh, an outgrowth of the um, senior committee was the creation of a cabin fever fireside chat. We had a terrific one last Tuesday. I inadvertently told everybody it was Thursdays at 11. It's actually Tuesdays at 11. Today's was uh, the Southampton History Museum uh, brought in our library partners and they gave an Ancestry.com overview. So while you are home, you're welcome to join in on these sessions Tuesdays. They also have great program programming on Thursdays at the Southampton Village History Museum. But Ancestry.com is free at the library. So go get your library cards. It's, it's actually quite fun. Um, the Southampton Rogers Memorial Library is also very understanding that a number of us have a significant technology learning curve. And I mentioned this before, but they want to support you and they've created a tech support address for questions called tech support at myrml.org. And hopefully, Julie, we can put that up. But uh, they also partnered with all the other libraries across Southampton Town to create this support for everybody because they realize we're in such a different situation. Um, with regards to that, I wanted to go back to our Business Revitalization Committee and thank them for all the good things that they're working on. We have a meeting this Friday um, to kind of move forward on some of the things I had mentioned earlier. But another piece that's come to our attention and the towns is uh, working cable and internet seems to be, you know, and, and phone service seems to be a game changer. People want to work from home. They feel safer. They, it's more economical. It's good for families. So the town is willing to partner with us. And this is just in, so, you know, no one knows about this. And we'd be willing to co-sponsor a consultant who would come to the village and kind of map out the issues, understand what the problems are, and maybe figure out a way to troubleshoot some solutions quickly with hotspots or whatever. I don't know if that can be done, but I've received a lot of calls continuously about that not working. And I know some of us, we've discussed this in, in a couple of meetings. Um, and the last piece I wanted to say is thank you, thank you, thank you to our many foot soldiers, our heroes in the hospitals, our Senior Rehabilitation Center up on County Road 39, all our first responders, our police, our fire department, our EMS, our dispatch, but also our drugstore, drug grocery store, hardware soldiers. Um, Godspeed and God bless. We will continue to love bomb you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night. So thank you for helping us, all our first responders, in doing that. Back to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, uh, Trustee Parrish. Yeah, I just wanted to just talk a little bit about, you know, five weeks into this uh, COVID, a lot has, you know, been going on and uh, a lot has been being accomplished throughout the village, throughout the county, state and everything. And, and again, like I said earlier, trying to digest all this stuff as it goes on is something that, you know, takes a lot of, uh, you know, commitment and, you know, kicking it back to the village. I'm proud of the way the village is moving forward. I'm proud of the way that they are, you know, taking care of things out on the streets, inside of Village Hall. They've done a really good job from, you know, Julie getting these uh, Zoom meetings to the point now where they're becoming very fluid. There's a lot going on that's all been one of these first timers. And, uh, you know, it takes a lot and there's a lot of good uh, thought process going on in the departments about staffing and, and really be proud of the fact that we have a lot of healthy uh, Village employees and uh, they're doing a great job amongst a you know, different time. Um, also another thing, with the uh, SBA loans, I've been getting a lot of uh, people telling me that they are receiving some commitments now, which is good to hear. So I'm proud of the fact that we have a couple local banks that have really been at the forefront. Uh, BNB has been really, really, really great from what I've understood, and People's Bank has also been another. So. To those that are getting these promissory notes now, it's great because as, as a business owner myself, you know, dealing with this right now is one of those things that where you got to cross your T's and dot your I's. And, uh, you know, these little, these, these small community banks, as we say, really have pulled through because some of the reports from the bigger banks, banks haven't been as uh, successful to this point. So to everybody out there, keep on, you know, doing what you're doing, 
and uh, let's keep on thinking the positive things. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Trustee Pilaro. Take it off mute. Mute. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, I, I want to echo you know everyone's uh, concerns, everyone's thoughts. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's not always easy going going towards the end because a lot of a lot of good things have been covered by by everyone. Um, I think that you know at this stage in the game, as 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 uh, Mark mentioned, five weeks in, we're learning a lot. Um, a lot is different today than it was five weeks ago or, or a couple months ago when, when the whole ideas of, of this started and, and we started, you know, hearing what was going on in Europe um, and how that was affecting and how it had affected people in Asia. Um, you know, my father, my father was, is overseas, lives overseas and, and um, really was thinking in January how to get him out and how to get him home. And, uh, for the most part, I'm glad that he stayed where he did. He's been self-isolating and self-quarantining for, for nine weeks now. Um, <clears throat> the last place I'd want him is in New York City as an 83-year-old man. Um, my mother is in New York City. And so, you know, there's, there's concern there when she goes out. I'm, I'm glad for friends that are able to do things for her. Um, I'm grateful uh, because I can't run into New York and do things. Um, a lot of people can't do things. A lot of people are stuck at home. Um, and as, as we heard Trustee Allen, and as I've heard from a few people, um, the internet isn't working great at all the times. Um, and, and it's tough, but we have to understand that the majority of people are at home working on the internet, trying to overload a system that, uh, that might not be able to handle the amount uh, that is necessary right now. So anything we can do to try and help, uh, help with that would be wonderful. Um, you know, how, oh, how do you come out of this? That is the big discussion right now. How do we get back? Where will we get back? How long will it take to get back to what we knew? Um, I don't know if we ever do. I don't know if it, if it, if it happens. I mean, does, does bowing now come back into for, for many cultures? It's been that way for a long time. Um, maybe, maybe it comes back in America it's something that Americans do. Um, and, you know, so, so a lot of things will change. A lot of things will be different. And it's how we come out of it. And again, we heard, we heard today the business revitalization um, has been thinking about that. And I think that that's wonderful. Um, we were supposed to have something for Earth Day today with trees and all of that that Gary had, had worked on and was working on. Um, we were supposed to have a, a, you know, before our last meeting on, on April 4th, I believe, we were supposed to have a big event showcasing Southampton and what's new here. Um, well, we'll have that opportunity again to showcase what is new, um, how we have come out of this. And we will have our residents to thank for that. Um, you know, as I said last time, a lot of residents have moved out here uh, to try and live, to try and get away because they feel safe here. And and I want to make sure that they continue to feel safe. I think that our first responders have done a great job with that. I think that our police department, um, you know, being able to go around and, and, and help with things and help with construction sites where people may be working and, and from the car being able to tell them to stop. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, Angel is out driving around. I see him pass my house numerous times um, going to different calls and areas. So I thank all of the people that are out there working for the village um, in that capacity. I thank all of the people in Village Hall or not in Village Hall as the case may be, who are working from home. This is something new for them, something they never, never understood. And I think Russell has done an absolutely and utterly fantastic job in keeping them together. Um, you know, we've been fortunate where, where we've been allowed to have calls as, as a board because of emergency directives. Um, but you know, we're, we're now again five weeks on, so that, that is going to change. And I doubt we will be able to have those calls again. But I know that, that the village is in good hands with the communication that has been set up prior. And, and so I, am, I, am, I know that the work will be done. Um, you know, people have sent in emails asking about beach permits and how to get those. And it's being 
taken care of. Um, we've had births that have occurred and birth certificates are going out. I know one last night uh, that, or yesterday afternoon, yesterday morning, early, um, Linda and Andrea Silich became grandparents for the first time. Their daughter Erica gave birth with her husband Anthony by her side. It was a very different experience for them. Um, he was the only one in the room with her at the time. The grandparents would have loved to have been there, but because of what we are facing, they couldn't. So it is going to be new. And, you know, we will come through this at some stage, whenever that is. We don't know. We keep getting pushed out. It will. Was, you know, it was uh, April 30th, it's now May 15th. Who knows if that changes? Um, I know one of my sons stuck down in Costa Rica. Uh, they were supposed to live the lift the travel bans on April 30th. That's now continuing to May, to May 15th. I don't know if he'll be able to get home on May 5th like he was supposed to. Um, it's worrisome, it's scary for a lot of people out there for many different reasons. And no one can understand what is going on with each individual. So as it has been said time and time again, be nice to people. No one knows what a backstory, what anyone else's backstory is. But go with kindness. Go with niceties. Be pleasant to your neighbors. Be pleasant to the people around you. Be, pr be pleasant to the residents of this village. Understand that a lot of people are going through a lot of different things. I said, it, I said it a week and a half ago in our last meeting on, on the 9th of April, my son's birthday, and I'll say it again. I am so fortunate that I have not known someone personally that has died from COVID. I, I hope that there are many, many other peoples out there that, that can say the same thing. But I know it's changing when we hear that there are over 880 80 deaths in Suffolk County alone thousands more around, around the state of ours, around the United States and around the world. Death is happening and I feel for those people and I grieve with you and I share in that with you. My compassion, I have empathy for you. And I hope that again, we come through this on the other side. So as I said earlier, wash your hands. Thank you, mom. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you very much, Trustee Pilaro. And, you know, I will echo those thoughts. Uh, there's a lot of people uh, who are working in the village of Southampton, ranging from our village employees to those at our hospital who deserve a whole uh, group of thanks. Uh, in particular, uh, I wanted to highlight, um, you know, our, our village employees, uh, whether it be Julie or Kathy or Mimi, Russell, you know, Pat, you know, all working from home, all alternating shifts. Uh, making sure that things are getting done. Um, wanted to give uh, a special thanks to uh, Ken Booth at the uh, Highway Department who's making some signs for us. Especially wanted to thank uh, EMS and our uh, Southampton Village Police Department. Uh, we did a big, uh, we distributed uh, over 5,000 free three-ply surgical masks to our residents uh, last week. Uh, our police and EMS did an excellent job uh, directing uh, traffic. It was highly successful. Uh, we made one uh, outreach and we had a line of cars basically from Main Street all the way down to Little Plains Beach. Uh, we'll be doing another one very shortly. We'll be announcing that, but really this could not have been done without the help of a group of volunteers and without the help of our police and EMS. And then uh, also wanted to thank uh, our, a few people um, in particular. Um, Dr. Mikolos from the Hamptons Health Society um, has worked uh, with us um, and we've worked very closely after the last several weeks um, we've done some big uh, fundraisers and, you know, through those fundraisers, especially thanks to Dr. Miklos, uh, we were able to uh, basically fundraise and deliver to Southampton Hospital um, 11 ventilators, 10 oxygen tanks. Uh, today we brought uh, gowns uh, that, uh, that we procured actually from two weeks ago that finally got here. We have tens of thousands of more three-ply surgical masks coming, all paid for, not with taxpayer money. Um, but with the help of fundraising from our residents, from the very residents who, are, who we are serving, um, who basically helped us. Uh, and of course, um, we can't uh, obviously go without thanking uh, our, our doctors and healthcare professionals, respiratory therapists who are still at the hospital every single day, putting their families at risk every single day they come home. Um, and so um, I'm very happy that our board, uh, you know, has really, um, you know, thanked, uh, thanked everybody here. Um, and if we missed anyone, 
um, thank you as well. So um, there's a reason why uh, we have done a great job flattening our curve uh, in, in Southampton Village. And it, we, we did so um, in part, you know, a combination of uh, our healthcare workers, our public officials, uh, and our residents. Um, and so thank you to all those three uh, categories of people who have helped us. So uh, with that said, um, I'd like to make a motion uh, to adjourn our meeting. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I was on mute. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Russell. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.